after the war in Ukraine now, and the capital, Kyiv, came under a mass Russian drone attack overnight. Several residential neighborhoods were targeted in the raid. Two people were injured and apartment buildings were damaged. The Air Force said it shot down 24 out of 28 drones. It's the sixth onslaught of its kind on the Ukrainian capital this month. Russia has stepped up its use of uncrewed aircraft against civilian areas as Ukraine's army has prevented it from making significant territorial gains on the front lines. DW correspondent Amin Isif sat down with Ukrainian soldiers and medics on leave in Kyiv to talk about what their service means for themselves and for their country. Everybody disappointed that our success uh, very low. But in reality, we are in the defense against a huge army. Against an army with, uh, they have chemical nuclear weapon. It's uh, not disappointing, no, and I'll tell you why. Um, we, were, we were simply, we we're defending a strategic point in, of, of Ukraine's defense. Uh, we have massive artillery uh, emplacements. Um, that we're protecting, and the enemy hasn't been able to get anywhere near. They would like to destroy those emplacements, because if they could, they could walk through Donetsk. They could walk into Slavyansk, they could walk into Kramatorsk, and we've stood firm and we've held them through massive casualties. We've stood firm, and, uh, and they've thrown everything at us. And when I'm talking about everything, anything that explodes or burns, chemical to aeroplane bombs and missiles, Наші люди неймовірно втомилися. Є серед нас такі, які кажуть, та мені байдуже, я втомився, але я все одно буду стояти до кінця. А можливо, можливо, дуже близько смерті, тому, в принципі, я не здамся і не піду додому, поки не добуду свій останній день на фронті. А є серед нас і такі, які кажуть, що це не чесно, що ми втомилися, багато хто вже хоче повернутися додому, багато хто вже хоче так само ем, бачити своїх дітей, дружину, так як е, це роблять інші, ті, хто живуть і не воюють. Ну, війна мусить закінчити, закінчитися, як і будь-яка війна, закінчується перемовинами. Але чим більше Україна покаже свою силу, тим краще будуть мови. One question: How many lives we have to spend for this? And it's very difficult to understand. Okay, you return Crimea to Ukraine, all eastern territories, but you have to lose 300,000 people. It's enough, or it? You can compare these territories and people's lives. I don't know, actually. I'm optimistic because it's the only one way how to don't lose your mind. Hope for the future. Um, I think we still have an opportunity uh, to win, but uh, if change nothing, we, uh, we lose this war. For more on the situation in Ukraine, let's bring in our correspondent, Matthias Böllinger in Kyiv. Matthias, we're slowly approaching the two-year mark for Russia's full-scale invasion of Ukraine. You've been there since day one. Is the morale among Ukrainians still as strong today as it was in the beginning? Look, in the very beginning, everybody was under shock. Everybody felt the need to do something. People were fleeing, other people were helping, um, and there was this extraordinary level of energy and activity everywhere. Of course, this cannot be sustained for years. So people have settled now uh, either back into their lives or into their wartime lives. Uh, many people have somebody at the front or are at the front um, um, and have prepared for uh, the long haul because everybody here understands that this is not going to be over very quickly. These hopes have uh, really uh, been crushed, that this might be a quick win, which last year maybe some people still thought would be possible. Um, but morale has not, um, you know, vanished in the sense that people are now ready to give up. People do feel the need uh, that uh, uh, the country must continue uh, to defend itself. But, of course, questions are arising. How? 
how long. There are lots of questions uh, uh, about how to do this and whether, of course, uh, the leadership has done the right things. Zelensky's rating has dropped. Uh, it's still a majority supporting him, but it's not the vast majority of almost 90% as in the beginning of the war. Do Ukrainians still believe they can win this war against Russia? The question is, uh, of course, how this would be possible, but uh, Ukrainians still think that they need to defend themselves against Russia. They cannot give up. Um, whether they will be able to take back all the territories or not, I think we have different opinions here on whether this would be possible or not. But uh, every, most people here are aware that a, uh, a quick, uh, let's say, settlement uh, with Russia, one that would... Um, open new possibilities for Russia to rearm uh, and to reattack. Then later would the, be the worst outcome. So people are still um, supporting the country's efforts um, and uh, the, the country's war efforts and defense efforts. Um, but there are, of course, questions around how this is done. Mm -hmm. uh, we've just heard the soldiers who thought that mobilization was unfair. There is the need to mobilize more people. I mean, people are more aware of how dangerous uh, the, the, the situation is. So there's also a little bit a rift between convictions and what people are ready to do themselves, or this is being renegotiated at this moment. DW's Matthias Böllinger in Kiev. Thank you very much indeed. So under these difficult circumstances, Kyiv is looking to increase the number in its ranks. That's why its military leaders earlier this week proposed mobilizing up to 500,000 more Ukrainians into its armed forces. On Thursday, the defense minister appealed to Ukrainians abroad to return home to defend their homeland, calling it their civic duty. In Germany alone, there are believed to be some 200,000 Ukrainian men of fighting age. Many of them are seeking refuge here, despite the fact that Ukrainian officials had initially banned men from leaving their country during times of war. DW correspondent Leonie von Hammerstein has been following this story for us. Leonie, how have Ukrainians in Germany reacted to this announcement? Well, firstly, not many want to speak openly about this. You can really tell that it's a very sub touchy subject. Um, DW did manage to speak to a few, um, but they too wanted to remain anonymous. Um, and the main sentiment um, they all shared was that, you know, the men who left Ukraine, either legally before the war started or illegally during the war, left for a reason. Um, one of them said he left because he wasn't, you know, he wasn't ready to fight. He was scared to go to the front lines. Another said he felt more useful doing other things, helping Ukrainian refugees settle here in Germany than being at the front. Another was talking about how Germany in those two years had become his home, how he's studying here, um, he has settled uh, down here. So while, you know, these Ukrainians sort of feel with their, uh, with the Ukrainians who are, who are fighting in Ukraine, um, you know, many of them have, have settled here, have a life here and are pretty unlikely to follow that call. Yeah. Leonie, as one of Ukraine's biggest backers, how has the German government responded to Kyiv's appeals? Any indication that Berlin would help put pressure on Ukrainian men to return to fight? Yeah, I mean, a lot of questions were raised. Um, what sort of legal mechanisms could be used to implement such a call? But then the German government was pretty quick to say that this doesn't really have any practical consequences for the Ukrainian men who are living in Germany. This is what Alexander Müller, the defense policy spokesman of the pro-business FDB party, told us. Every Ukrainian citizen that uh, is currently here in Germany is protected by German law. And um, if um, some, some men uh, don't want to fight uh, or don't want to do military service, uh, we here in Germany have the right to um, to abstain from from this, and so there's no um, no legal possibility for Ukraine to to um, coerce um, or to to conscript uh, these guys, and uh, so we don't need to 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 do something. So you heard there, legally, it's pretty clear. Then you had a few um, politicians, especially from the opposition, from the Conservatives, CDU, coming out uh, to show a lot of understanding for the Ukrainian Defense Ministry and their call 
on those people living in Germany to to come back to Ukraine and fight. And, you know, one politician suggested that um, there should be political incentives for them to return to Ukraine. And he even uh, brought in the idea of cutting unemployment, unemployment benefits of Ukrainian men of military age living in Germany um, to incentivize them to go back. Those is uh, more talk than action for now. Um, and the German government has been clear it won't really affect the Ukrainians who don't want to go return to Ukraine. PW correspondent Leonie von Hammerstein, thank you.